Functions. Domain range with rational functions. What are they? Functions are a relation from a set of inputs to a set of outputs, where each input maps exactly to one output. Why? Helps the right code shoulder. Interesting fact. Toads may also play dead, or puff themselves up to appear bigger if they feel threatened by predators. Now, let's take a look at the examples we're going to discuss in today's video. Before we take a look at example 1, let's look at the cases we could have when we have rational functions. The first case is the highest degree in the numerator is less than the highest degree in the denominator, which means we will have a horizontal asymptote at y is equal to 0. The second case is the highest degree in the numerator is the same as the highest degree in the denominator which means we will have a horizontal asymptote at y is equal to the leading coefficient on top divided by the leading coefficient on bottom, or in this case, y is equal to 5 halves. The third case is the highest degree in the numerator is greater than the highest degree in the denominator, which means we won't have a horizontal asymptote. Now, let's put those cases into action by taking a look at example 1. Let's read the steps. Step 1, graph. Step 2, Set the denominator's parts to 0. Step 3. Check the exponents. Step 4. Compare answer to graph. Now, let's read the question. Find the domain and range of the function f of x is equal to x squared all over x squared minus 9. Let's put up the graph to help us visually. Now, let's put what we want to find, the domain and the range. First, let's find the domain. What do we think is the next step? That's right, we bring down x squared minus 9 and set that equal to 0. So we have x squared minus 9 is equal to 0. Now, let's add 9 to both sides. Let's take the square root of both sides. So x is equal to plus or minus 3. What do we think this means? That's right, we cannot use these numbers because the denominator would be 0. So we have vertical asymptotes at x equals negative 3 and x equals 3. Now, let's find the horizontal asymptote. We need to look at the powers in the numerator and the denominator. We have the same. Both are 2. What do we think this means? That's right. We have a horizontal asymptote at y is equal to the leading coefficient of the numerator, which is 1, divided by the leading coefficient of the denominator which is also 1. And 1 divided by 1 is 1. So the horizontal asymptote is y is equal to 1. Now, let's write down the domain. We can write it as x is an element of all real numbers such that x cannot equal negative 3 or 3. Or using interval notation, we have the unbounded interval of negative infinity to negative 3, union, the open interval of negative 3 to 3, union, the unbounded interval of 3 to positive infinity. Now, let's write down the range. We can write it as y is an element of all real numbers, such that y is less than or equal to 0, or y is greater than 1. Or using interval notation, we have the unbounded interval of negative infinity to 0, union, the unbounded interval of 1 to positive infinity. That is the domain and range of our function. That is example 1. Let's move on to example 2. Now, let's read the question. Find the domain and range of the function f of x is equal to x minus 2 all over the square root of x plus 4. Let's put up the graph to help us visually. Now, let's put what we want to find, the domain and the range. First, let's find the domain. What do we think is the next step? That's right we bring down the square root of x plus 4. Since we have a square root, we focus on just x plus 4 and set that equal to 0. So we have x plus 4 is equal to 0. Let's subtract 4 on both sides, so x is equal to negative 4. What do we think this means? That's right, we cannot use this number. So we have a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 4. Now, let's find the horizontal asymptote. We need to look at the powers in the numerator and the denominator. The power in the numerator is greater, which is 1, than the power in the denominator, which is 1 half. What do we think this means? 
That's right. We don't have a horizontal lasso token. Now, let's write down the domain. We can write it as x is an element of all real numbers such that x is greater than negative 4. Or, using interval notation, we have the unbounded interval of negative 4 to positive infinity. Now, let's write down the range. We can write it as y is an element of all real numbers. Or, using interval notation, we have the unbounded interval of negative infinity to positive infinity. That is the domain and range of our function. That is example 2. Let's move on to example 3. Now, let's read the question. Find the domain and range of the function f of x is equal to x minus 1 all over x cubed minus 4x. Let's put up the graph to help us visually. Now, let's put up what we want to find, the domain and range. First, let's find the domain. What do we think is the next step? That's right, we bring down x cubed minus 4x. Since both terms share an x, let's factor out an x. So we have x times the quantity of x squared minus 4. Now, we have a difference of squares. What do we think is the next step? That's right, we factor x squared minus 4 as the quantity of x plus 2 times the quantity of x minus 2 and set that equal to 0. So x is equal to 0, negative 2, or 2. What do we think this means? That's right, we cannot use these numbers. So we have vertical asymptotes at x equals 0, x equals negative 2, and x equals 2. Now, let's find the horizontal asymptote. We need to look at the powers in the numerator and the denominator. The power in the numerator, which is 1, is less than the power in the denominator, which is 3. What do we think this means? That's right, we have a horizontal asymptote at y is equal to 0. Now, let's write down the domain. We can write it as x is an element of all real numbers such that x cannot equal 0, negative 2, or 2. Or using interval notation, we have the unbounded interval of negative infinity to negative 2, union the open interval of negative 2 to 0, union, the open interval of 0 to 2, union, the unbounded interval of 2 to positive infinity. Now, let's write down the range. We can write it as y is an element of all real numbers. Our range is all real numbers because one of the sections of the graph crosses the horizontal asymptote at 1, 0. Or using interval notation, we can write it as the unbounded interval of negative infinity to positive infinity. That is the domain and range of our function. That is example 3. Now, it is your turn. So go ahead and pause the video here so you can take your time to answer this question. And I will show you the results in 3, 2, and 1. Did you get it correct? Awesome. If not, there's always tomorrow.